They knew that even if the Senate would pass that act unanimously, the then newly elected President Taft would promptly veto it. So they waited. In 1912, their man, Woodrow Wilson, was elected to the presidency. Immediately after Wilson was inaugurated, Senator Aldrich railroaded the Federal Reserve Act through both houses of Congress, and Wilson promptly signed it, and the Federal Reserve Act became law. That heinous act of treason was committed in December 23, 1913, two days before Christmas, when all the members of Congress, except for several carefully picked representatives, and three equally carefully picked senators were away from Washington. How heinously treasonous was that act? I'll tell you. Our founding fathers knew full well the power of money. They knew that whoever had that power held the destiny of our nation in his hands. Therefore, they carefully guarded this power when they set forth in the Constitution that Congress, the elected representatives of the people, alone would have that power. The constitutional language on this point is brief, concise, and specific, stated in Article 1, Section 8, Paragraph 5, defining the duties and powers of Congress, and I quote, to coin money, regulate the value thereof, and a foreign coin, and the standard of weights and measures, unquote. But on that tragic, unforgettable day of infamy, December 23, 1913, the men we sent to Washington to safeguard our interests, the representatives and senators and Woodrow Wilson, delivered the destiny of our nation into the hands of two aliens from Eastern Europe, Jacob Schiff and Paul Warburg. Warburg was a very recent immigrant who came here on orders from Rothschild for the express purpose of blueprinting that foul Federal Reserve Act. Now, the vast majority of the American people think that the Federal Reserve System is the United States government-owned agency. That is positively false. All of the stock of the Federal Reserve Banks is owned by the member banks, and the heads of the member banks are all members of the hierarchy of the great Illuminati conspiracy known today as the CFR. The details of that act of treason in which many traitorous so-called Americans participated are far too long for this recording. But all those details are available in a book entitled The Federal Reserve Conspiracy, written by Eustace Mullins. In that book, Mullins tells the entire horrifying story and backs it up with unquestionable documentation. Aside from it being a truly fascinating and shocking story of that great betrayal, every American should read it as a matter of vital intelligence for the time when the whole American people will finally come awake and smash the entire conspiracy. And with God's help, that awakening will surely come. You can get a copy of that book from the publishers, the Christian Educational Association, 530 Chestnut Street, Union, New Jersey. Now, if you think that those aliens and their by accident of birth American co-conspirators would be content with just the control of our money system, you're in for another very sad shock. The Federal Reserve System gave the conspirators complete control of our money system, but it in no way touched the earnings of the people, because the Constitution positively forbids what is now known as the 20% withholding tax. But the Illuminati blueprint for one world enslavement calls for the confiscation of all private property and control of individual earning powers. This and Karl Marx stressed that feature in his blueprint, had to be accomplished by a progressive graduated income tax. As I stated, such a tax could not lawfully be imposed upon the American people. It is succinctly and expressly forbidden by our Constitution. Thus, only an amendment to the Constitution could give the federal government such confiscatory powers. Well, that too was not an insurmountable problem for our Machiavellian plotters. The same elected leaders in both houses of Congress, and the same Mr. Woodrow Wilson, who signed the infamous Federal Reserve Act into law, amended the Constitution to make the federal income tax 
known as the 16th Amendment, a law 